welcome. Hello guys, I'm Jake Abdenor, 252 Marathoner Kinesiologist, and today is going to be a two minute quick tip on the ketogenic diet and how it will kill your running performance. What's this guy talking about? I saw on Dr. Phil. What about ketosis? I thought about this. What about losing body? Okay, at two minutes. Ready? Go. Okay, so one. What is the ketogenic diet? Basically, it's eating as little carbs as possible, 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrate per day, like an apple, two apples, filling in the rest of your diet with protein and fat. Oh, that sounds kind of nice. It's only all to fat. Think that sounds nice? Think again. Why did this diet come around? It came to prominence because it may have a positive effect on conditions like epilepsy, like controlling seizures and stuff. But in this video, all we care about is running performance. Will this diet help me get faster running time? Can I run faster by eating ketogenic? Specifically in races 800 meter to the marathon, which we'll go into in a second. Proven effects. Yes, your body will adapt to this diet. It will take time, but what will happen is over time, you will start to burn fat more easily, more readily as an energy source. So there'll be more fat available for oxidation. Cool, sounds great, right? Oh my God, I have all this fat I wanna lose. Why don't I just do this diet and then I'll burn more fat? But we don't care about burning fat, we care about running faster time. As I was looking for studies, I was only looking for studies that looked at the effect of ketogenic diets on athletes or on people who are physically active, because that's that's us, that's what we care about. So this is one study that people love to cite. There's this one study they did with elite ultra runners. So guys and girls who run 50 to 100 mile races. They were on a ketogenic diet for an average of 20 months and yes, they adapted to the diet. Low carbohydrate, high fat diet, and highly trained keto adapted ultra endurance athlete. The enhanced ability to oxidize fat during exercise across a range of intensities is striking. So they adapted to it. Cool. I found another study that took 12 people that were physically active and prescribed them a ketogenic diet for 40 days. They found that the drastically reduced carbohydrate content of the diet seems to be no limiting factor for running performance. Mm, sounds like a great thing. Maybe I should try to do a ketogenic diet too. But like I said in the beginning, we care about performance. The first study, it's great that they learn to burn fat more readily as an energy source, but did they run faster. The first study, the reason it's ridiculous is because one, they were running at 65% of their VO2 max and two, for like three hours, which means they're basically running at an easy pace for three hours. They were jogging for three hours, but I don't care. I don't care what your body does if it's jogging for three hours. I care if we're throwing down for a marathon, 80% VO2 max for how long? You're running a 5K, you're 90, 95% your VO2 max for how long? How long can you sustain high intensity aerobic exercise running during a race? Race times, that's what we care about. That second study, the problem was that it only had two runners in the study and one of the runners only ran like one hour per week. The other one only ran two hours. The top two athletes in that 12 person study were triathletes. That parameter for the study was that it seems to be no limiting factor. And in the study, their VO2 max even dropped a little bit. Their time to exhaustion dropped. All right, here's the thing with these diets. I know I've gone over two minutes. I don't care, this is important. Here's the thing about ketogenic diets. Yes, they can help with your body composition. It makes sense. If you mainly give your body fat to use, if you mainly eat fat and you don't have any carbohydrate stores available, your body will learn to burn fat more easily. That makes sense. If you can adhere to it and you can do it, you'll probably start to have a leaner figure. That's great. This. Ouch! Oh, I'm sorry. Did my pen get in the way of your ass? Do me a favor and lose five pounds immediately or get out of my building like now! Get out! But as runners, how will it affect our race times? When we're running from 800 meters to the marathon, your body is relying on stored carbohydrate sources. That's just the name of the game because you don't run a race less than 70% of your VO2 max. And that speed, that, that percentage of effort, that VO2 max, 75, 80%, as you run faster, your body has to use Carbohydrate has to use glycogen as an energy source because it's quick, it's easy, available energy to burn. That's the point of that source. The whole point of glycogen is that it's easy to burn. You go from glycogen to glucose into the bloodstream, it's broken down, and it's converted to ATP, and it's just so quick and easy. Our bodies can absolutely burn fat as an energy source, and we do. We're burning it right now at rest. And when you run at a certain intensity, like 50 to 60% of your VO2 max, yeah, you're training your body to burn fat more easily as an energy source. So if we're talking about the marathon or we're talking about any kind of longer distance event, that's the point of the long run. You do your long runs, most of them, at an easier manageable pace 
for a long period of time. You're training your body to burn fat more readily, more easier. That's one of the big points of doing a long run. So those fat adaptations are best found through training adaptations, not diet modifications. If your goal is high end running performance, you might, you might also be saying, but what about the wall, Jake? What about this wall? I run the marathon, the wall comes and I just try to and just, oh. <laughs> Myself. I know we can only store enough glycogen in our muscles and our liver for around 20 miles ish of continuous exercise intensity before we run out and then it's bad news bears. That's the point of the long run, to train your body to, to burn fat more easier, maybe in the beginning part of the marathon. Also, that's the point of glycogen supplementation during a race. That's why you take goo packs, that's why you take sugary drinks, that's why you eat stuff during the race. Like you're gonna wanna eat like two to 400 calories of stuff during a marathon. Sorry, anybody who's not doing a marathon. You have to continuously uh, eat. Your hydration it's led to my drinking problem. <laughs> and your nutrition has to be on point for something like the marathon so that you don't hit the wall. Okay, we'll link my sources below. I know this went over two minutes. I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about this stuff and I want you guys to just have all the, the thing is that just like eating for you and me, for normal people, like practically eating a ketogenic diet is just, uh, it's just like, what do you do? You go out to a restaurant and you're like, I'm sorry, I can't have carbs. Like wh what kind of world is that? That's a third of all energy sources. You have three macronutrients, carbs, fat, protein. When you take away one of them, it, but there's only two left. Like what kind of world when you can't eat like, like French pastry and you can't eat like dessert and like bonbons and like what kind of, I don't know what kind of world it is where you can't eat chocolate croissants, but I don't want to live in that kind of world. And by the way, don't trust me. I'm just some guy on the internet. I probably bought this t-shirt. I don't even know what a run is. How do I calorie? What's a heel drop? Blah. Another thing, find me an elite marathoner or an elite 5K or 10K runner who eats a ketogenic diet. I'm talking guys who run like sub 220 marathon, sub 13 5K, people who throw down. Find one of those dudes who eats a ketogenic diet. I will, I will be on board with that all the way, but it doesn't work like that. If you take candy and Ethiopian runners and some of the best runners in the world, one of the primary staples in their diet is ugali, which is basically cornmeal. Like their diet is like 70% carbohydrate. There's no way someone's gonna run under 220 in the marathon eating ketogenic. Run. When your body runs at high intensities, it needs muscle glycogen to fuel itself. The best way to get muscle glycogen is to eat a carbohydrate rich diet. It's easily converted into muscle glycogen. That's just the way it works. There's a reason our body has this mechanism. <laughs> Okay, we all want to get faster. I want to get faster. I want to break 230 in the marathon, man. That would be fantastic. But the reason I did this video, and I only pulled like two research studies out of dozens, out of hundreds about ketogenic diets. This video, this conversation could be 10 times longer. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit how to, how to look at something analytically. And so when you hear something, whether it's on The Guardian, which is where I started this whole thing from, Dr. Oz or on like diets.com or whatever it might be, you hear it, but then you can kind of go and do your own research and just really look at if it's specific and relative and relatable to you. And and I've been doing this and I've been doing this for years because I used to, I used to come from a place when I was younger where I didn't know I didn't have any education. I had no idea and so I tried everything. I spent so much money on supplements and all these like crazy diets and it was just like all I wanted to do was get better and get faster and be healthier and slimmer and fitter and all that good stuff. And there's a ton of misinformation out there. So I made this video just to show how you can you can go yourself and look and refute and just check the research and really see like if it's relatable, if it's relative. You know, we all wanna get better. And 99% of the time, the best way to do this, to reach your goals, to go to your next level in performance with running, isn't to buy some supplement or try some crazy diet. It's just to put in the mileage, <laughs> all right? Put in that hard work, put in the dedication, and the results will follow. Man, when I started running, my first run ever, I ran like a 12 minute mile. And when I when I was in high school, I couldn't even break. Dude, when I ran a 5K in high school, my best time was like 1926 or something. Like I, I could barely break 20 minutes. I could barely run 630 miles for three miles. Now, I could run 630 miles for 26 miles. Over the basically 10 years since that point, that progress hasn't been because I've been eating some superfood or been on some crazy miraculous diet. It's just because I've been running, I've been putting in the mileage and eating a normal balanced diet and putting the time into the sport. So I promise you guys be patient, love the sport, put time into it, and the results will come back. And seriously, go eat some carbs. Like, God, how can you not just want to eat like a croissant right now? All right, I'll see you guys later, bye. Thank you.